Hi, I'm Ike Ellis and welcome to Tips from the SQL Consultant. In today's tip, we're going to talk about Set Exact Abort. What a boring name, but it's such an essential and important feature. And let's just go to MSDN and talk about it. It says, when Set Exact Abort is on, if a transact SQL statement raises a runtime error, the entire transaction is terminated and rolled back. Well, that's kind of what we'd expect to happen, or probably what we want to happen in most instances, um, but by default, it's set off. And let me show you how important this is in code. So what I'm going to do is just create a quick table, uh, T1, and it's got a column called call1, and it's a primary key. And we know what primary keys are. We know that that means that every single value in call1 has to be unique. So I'm doing that right here in this multi-line insert. I'm inserting four different values as records, one, two, three and four and I execute that everything goes fine now what happens if I want to run two separate insert statements one where I'm inserting row one now row one already exists right so we know that should trigger a primary key violation and we also want to insert row 99 and 99 should go ahead and work right now no, nothing specific here we're assuming set implicit transactions is off we execute this and we get the primary key violation like we expect you cannot insert duplicates now my big question is which rows got inserted and you're gonna say well Ike I already know this it's it's record 99 got inserted and there'll only be one record one because that was already there and that's what triggered the violation and if you said that you'd be right that's exactly how it works. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take those same two statements. We're going to insert record 1 here and record 100 here, but instead we're going to throw it inside a transaction. So begin transaction, my insert, my insert, and then a commit transaction. So we execute this, and again, record 1 should give us the primary key violation. So we execute that, and boom, we get 2627. That's my error message right down here. And yep, we get the violation. Now, here's the big question which row got inserted did 100 get inserted and when I execute this uh-oh 100 did get inserted and the reason why is because by default set exact abort is off but if I set it to on and now I'm going to insert record 1 that'll trigger the violation I'm going to insert record 200 but this time I'm going to have set exact abort be on right that's my whole thing and then execute that oh same error now, what records got inserted and 200 did not get inserted. So with exact abort on, inside the transaction, they either both commit or they both um, roll back if there's an error. And, and that's how it works. That's pretty slick, I think. Now, you might think, hey, wait a minute, Ike, I want exact abort on all the time. What can I do if I want it on all the time? Well, the way you do that is you right click in Object Explorer, you go to Properties, you go to Connections, and all the way down here at the bottom of Connections, you can just check exact abort for the connection to this server. Now, that means that all connections to this server are going to have exact abort on by default. You got to be careful with that, and I'm going to show you why. First of all, this connection right here is operating under the old assumption that exact abort is off by default. But if I open up a new connection, this brand new connection and every connection after that is going to be set with exact abort on. So I'm going to I'm going to real quick just drop the table so I can start this thing over. I'm going to go back, I'm going to create the table, same primary key, create my four records, come in here and no transaction, right? I'm going to insert one that triggers the constraint violation. I'm going to insert 99, that should go through. I execute that. Oh, I get the violation. Which rows got inserted? not 99. That's weird behavior, right? That means that these statements inside the batch are, are operating inside a transaction. We can talk about that and why that is a little bit later, but that's what exact abort on will do for you. That even in a script, if there's a violation in the batch, um, it'll roll back together. So now let's go ahead and begin transaction, insert, insert 100, just like you'd expect. Oh, let's go back. Execute that. Oh, violation no exact abort on in this case right so go ahead and select from t1 and no 100 so that that's just to prove to you that exact abort is on by default now that's it exact abort if you're not using it and you're getting weird um, data integrity violations um, that might be the reason is that you're unaware of that setting and you're unaware that it can be a connection setting on the server itself that's it stay tuned while I give more error handling tips uh, in future episodes thanks a lot guys